Well, spring is just about here. The sun is out, and in Germany, so are other things. As Berlin says, women can go topless at public pools. It's being chalked up as a win for what Germans call free body culture. And it comes after the government was subject to a lawsuit for throwing a woman out of a public pool after she decided to bear it all, which is generally acceptable in many parts of Germany. Overall, the rules of swimming pools have not changed, simply the interpretation. The law still requires that a bathing suit cover a person's most intimate areas, but what that means is clearly now as open as people's tops. For more on this, we have a debate in studio with Dr. Shlomi Aharone Lair, an activist and gender researcher at Barlan University. And joining us on Skype is Sipi Yarom, a religious journalist that covers family issues. Thank both of you for being with us. I want to jump right into this, starting with you, Shlomi. One of the big things that we're seeing is this push towards, well, a form of equality saying, well, if men don't have to cover their chest, women don't have to cover their chest. And that's a relic of the past attempting to promote or cover sexuality for the sake of children. And it clashes with what we in the modern West see as a form of consent-based morality, which is if everyone agrees it's not hurting anybody, what's the problem? Exactly. I think it's a, an important move in gender equality, and I don't think there's any harm for children, obviously, in uh, seeing uh, men and women as they are. And I want to get something as well from Sippy in our Jerusalem studio, because on one hand, we're seeing this idea that nobody's her. On the other hand, we're seeing the idea that's been traditional in our societies that, look, we want to protect children, and to protect children, we have to create boundaries against sexuality, even if those boundaries are quite a few steps away. Once you normalize one thing, it starts to normalize other activities. What is the sort of family-oriented position here? Is this a nothing burger? Is this sort of benign situation? Or is this going to snowball later on into accepting more things. Um, if we're talking about uh, protecting children, I wouldn't even start with that. I will start with women. Is that really promoting equality for women, or is it promoting equality for uh, Berlin men who would like to watch women, uh, women breast on their swimming pool instead of watching it on OnlyFans? Is it? It, we, we live in an era that the word privacy, some people can't even uh, uh, spell it anymore, but th those are still private parts. And promoting the idea that this is what would uh, be equality, I think, is wrong. Um, we can still save some parts of our body for ourselves, and it's not just about children who see it, it's about ourselves. It's about how women w will be viewed, not by men, but by ourselves. Well, I would say uh, it does promote body positive. It does promote uh, women uh, ownership over their bodies, over their rights, over the way they represent themselves publicly. There's no doubt about that, especially in a time when we're going uh, more modest in ultra-religious uh, 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 societies. So this is an important step. At the same time, I don't uh, negate completely what CP says as uh, the issue of privacy and the sexualization, over sexualization objectification of women still exist. But if it is within the norm of uh, Berlin, or, then it's okay. Women can make uh, decide for themselves how they want to present themselves publicly. Well, I want to go back to you on this one, Sippy. And the question is, is this simply a matter of self-respect, of privacy, or is this something that we see a uh, sort of trend around the world? Where we're seeing old values sort of pushed aside, new forms of morality come in. Is this a sort of, I'm not going to say the word threat, but is this a challenge to the uh, old way of doing things that many people in the religious community would uh, champion? I would agree that this is a challenge, but I want to take you to my place as a woman who goes only to separate uh, swimming pools and separate beaches. And I see the women coming there who are not religious, who come there because they want to protect the body from the looks of other people, that they don't want them to look at them, that they want to bathe um, uh, topless without men looking at them. So um, I, I, I go to this place. If it's women only, then I don't have a problem. If it's men and women, then I do have a, pro a problem with it. Um, um, again, because of, because of the mixing of it. I take my children to uh, separate beaches and they might see uh, those women there, but I don't take them to uh, mixed beaches where they, where they might see the men topless. 
It's actually a very interesting way of looking at things because the traditionalist uh, keeping things separate for the sake of uh, modesty, for the sake of self-respect, actually overlaps with a lot of what uh, feminist researchers would talk about with the male gaze and objectification. If that's the case, why would you see there being as any sort of being at odds over this debate? Well, let's start with the modesty uh, rules in religious society being not modest for themselves. Uh, the over uh, scrutinization, how women dress, what they wear, how long is their skirt. This is all went way too far and it's totally unacceptable. It's, uh, it's uh, policing women looks, it's shaming women uh, based on what they dress. They, constant looking and at how they get dressed. Is it, does it pass? Does it not pass? So this is a, a certainly a serious issue. Obviously, there's also the question in secular society of over-objectivization of women, uh, looking at how, uh, um, um, looking at women uh, from a sexual uh, perspective. But again, the, the issue is how do we change society so women can feel free whenever they are to walk as they are, to decide what they wear, and not being looked at uh, uh, either if they are modest enough or if uh, uh, they are sexual enough. I guess the, the big question for both of you then would be, where is the happy medium between self-expression and maintaining a combination of public decency, self-respect, and personal dignity? And I want to throw that one to you first, Sipi. Um, so actually, in a way, I do, ex I do agree with Dr. Haroni Lear that it's about women's choice. And surprisingly, I'm religious and I dress this way because I choose that. And so are many, many, many other women around the world. So um, claiming that it's um, somebody that is dictated upon us is just like any other things that it is dictated upon men because we observe Torah. Uh, and the Torah rules uh, are, are, are on men as well, and they have modesty rules as well. Um, while, so if we talk about the woman's choice, okay, this is why I, I didn't say that I oppose the law, I oppose the idea behind the law. That I think that in order to uh, preserve women's security, uh, we should remember in which world we are living in. And in, there's a Hebrew saying that you should be uh, smart and not just. Maybe you are just if you are um, enacting such a rule, but you wouldn't be smart. And I, I want to sort of uh, get some response from you Ella, as well. Well, the whole idea is changing the world, not only changing ourselves. Obviously, at, at certain places, I agree with you, it might not be that smart uh, to, be, to be totally ourselves. But the idea is to create a better world where men and women are equal and are free to present themselves as they wish without uh, uh, being scrutinized over that. I guess it's a long, long uh, journey to get to that place, but uh, getting there is through equality rules and through having women choose for themselves how they present themselves in public. Well, I mean, the world's always changing as we see it, and changing in one direction is very much uh, a flawed argument because when we're talking about this push for equality and at least this conception of it, it's very, very young on the world stage, only a few decades old. And we talk about comparing that traditionalism has existed for thousands of years. I guess one of the big questions is, yes, we might see this push in Germany right now, but why should we assume that this sort of very modern push is going to change thousands of years of tradition and human society building? Changing is a really a long journey. Uh, we as feminists really experience a lot of backlashes. Every move we make, we get a, a reaction in the other direction. So it takes a very long time. This is a, a small, a minor issue. Obviously, the, there are greater issue of women representation in public spaces as leaders, as uh, government officials, as decision makers, uh, and having more women scientists in STEM. So there's like a lot on the agenda. And it, it is, I agree with you, a very long journey, but it has to be made in order for a world to be more just and, and Sipi, allow women to be free in it. So be back to you very briefly because we're almost out of time. On the value of this whole uh, modernity and equality versus preserving the value of tradition, where do, you, where do we draw these lines? Um, I think it's mainly on one's choice. And I don't oppose the idea that women need to fix many, many things around us. I just think it should be done wisely and in a way that wouldn't harm us, but only mm -hmm. advance us. And we are cutting now for our commercial break. Thank you both for joining us. And